Hello, everyone. If you're just entering, welcome, welcome. We're going to give just a little bit less than a minute so we can admit some more participants and then we are going to get started. I'm very excited. Yes, I see a lot of familiar faces. All right, the time is now 7.01. And in the interest of respecting everyone's time, let's go ahead and get this party started. So hello, everyone, and welcome to the Global Learning at a Distance webinar. This is the first of a series of webinars that are going to be conducted by the NEA Global Learning Fellows. So we are really excited to have you all with us tonight. Um, we have a lot of things to get through. We are chock full of goodness for the next hour. So I want to go ahead and get started with our agenda. All right, so a few housekeeping things. As you can see, some of us, you probably see our names and we have an ES, an MS, or HS before our names. That stands for elementary school, middle school, and high school. And it would be awesome if you all could take a minute here to go ahead and rename yourselves and put an ES, an MS, or an HS in front of your names. And that is for the breakout groups that we're going to be doing later on in the evening, the last half hour or so. We wanna put you with your interest groups. So if you're in elementary school, go ahead and put an ES in front of your name. If you're in middle school, please put an MS or an HS if you're in high school. And just a quick tip, if you don't know how to rename yourselves, if you are looking at the panel with your face in it and you see all your faces, I want you to just hover over your face and um, you'll see three little dots that will pop up. If you click on those three dots, you can rename yourselves. And if you're having any issues with that, put something into the chat and we can definitely rename. We can definitely rename it for you, okay? And as I said, and hopefully you all are getting excited about this, we're going to be doing breakout sessions that are going to be based on your grade level. And um, also really quick, if you're K through 12, just kind of pick which one you may be most interested in. Um, but as you're thinking about these breakout sessions, we're going to be talking about some ideas and sharing in small groups. So throughout this webinar, definitely be thinking of something that you would like to share with your group in the small group session. And um, if you're an introvert like myself, believe it or not, um, we're going to be doing collaborative slides in these breakout sessions. So we wanna give you an opportunity to use your voice even if you aren't really comfortable speaking up in those small group settings. So, um, I don't wanna waste any more time on the agenda because I can talk forever. But like I said, we don't have forever. We just have an hour. So we're gonna go ahead and meet everybody who's going to be talking tonight on the panel. First, um, I'll start with myself. My name is Makisha. I am um, K through five instructional technology specialist in Atlanta, Georgia. And I am a global learning fellow for the 2020 cohort. Hi everybody, I'm Kate Van Haren. I teach fourth and fifth grade social studies and reading. I'm from Pittsville, Wisconsin, uh, and I'm a 2020 fellow. Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Noah Zeichner. I am a high school social studies and Spanish teacher in Seattle, Washington, and I was part of the 2018 Global Learning Fellows Group who traveled to South Africa. Hi everyone, my name is Lauren Winwehan. I am um, a 2013 fellow. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of old school compared to these newbies, but um, I am in the great state of Texas and I'll pass it over to Terry. Not even old, Lauren. I was a 2011 and I'm also a 2020. So I'm Terry Vest. I teach English, social studies and psychology grade seven through 12 in Vermont, and I'm also 
this year, I'm also a full-time online instructor. Nicole? Hi, everybody. My name is Nicole Vickerman. I teach world geography in Plano, Texas, and I am a 2020 Global Learning Fellow. Um, and next, we are going to hear from Elizabeth Schneider from the NEA Foundation. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Elizabeth Schneider. Um, I'm the um, Chief Strategy o Chief Officer for Strategic Initiatives at the NEA Foundation. And just um, for anyone who doesn't know the foundation, we're a national nonprofit philanthropy based in Washington, D.C. And our mission is to promote the absolute best in, ed in public education. Um, we do that by um, investing in educators' leadership and shared learning by supporting partnerships that advance justice, equity, excellence, and opportunity, and by sharing improvements in education policy and practice that result from the leadership of educators. And our, I know many of you, um, perhaps most of you, are a Global Learning Fellow alumni, but we may have some folks out there who have not been a part of the Global Learning uh, Fellowship Program at the foundation. And um, to you, we just wanna say that this is a cohort-based professional development opportunity, peer learning and field study. And if you have not participated in the fellowship, we invite you to check out our website on the NEA Foundation and learn more about the program. And we are just enormously proud of this program. It's uh, a real priority for the foundation. We're in the 10th year of the program and we appreciate the dedication of all of you to global competency and especially appreciate our alumni hosting the event tonight. Thank you. Well, the theme of tonight's webinar is global learning at a distance. And so we're, we're gonna be sharing all sorts of ideas for how we can uh, teach global competence at a distance or in, even in a hybrid model is in all over the country. We're all in different um, situations, of course. Um, but we want to start with a common definition of global competence. There are many. Um, here is one, and this comes from the OECD. Um, and this is this was used uh, with the PISA test in 2018. It's very similar to other definitions that you'll see out there. Um, global competence is the capacity to examine local, global, and intercultural issues, to understand and appreciate the perspectives and worldviews of others, to engage in open, appropriate, and effective interactions with people from different cultures, and to act for collective well-being and sustainable development. Um, many of us may be familiar with the four domains of global competence. Those of you who have gone through the Global Fellows Program have seen uh, this framework, of course, and it's used by many uh, schools and districts across the country. So the four domains, as you'll see on the left, are investigate the world, recognize perspectives, communicate ideas, and taking action. And you'll see these four domains um, featured in some of the, the lesson and project examples that the panelists will share tonight. Um, and as you think about what ideas you can swap with other people and share in your breakout rooms, see if you can attach one or more of these global competence domains to them. But we also think about content in terms of global issues. And we look to the sustainable development goals as a source of many themes and specific issues that we can integrate into our learning. And we'll actually have a whole nother webinar uh, in a couple of months focused on teaching with the SDGs. So we're gonna get started now with some of our panelists uh, sharing some ideas from their classroom, from elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools that all connect in some way to one or more of these domains of global competence um, and or the sustainable development goals. So first we'll hear from Kate. All right, so I wanted to share, uh, this is actually a group project that I worked on with a high, another high school in Wisconsin. Um, when I did this, both of our schools were in hybrid model. Uh, so I had kids in school and kids online learning. Um, the main goal of this lesson was to introduce the concept of seijo poetry. Uh, most people here, are, I bet, are familiar with Japanese haiku, which is the 575 syllable pattern. Seijo is very similar. It just follows uh, a different syllable pattern. It's 14, 16, 14. 
with a total of 44 to 46 syllables. And it follow, uh, the key thing with CJO is there's a twist at the end, which um, especially if, if you have older elementary students, it's kind of fun. Um, I always teach it that, you know, you always predict when you read. And so you, you kind of, as the CJO poetry writer, you always kind of want to turn the other direction um, on that third line. So on the side, I have two examples here. So the top one is a little bit more of a traditional um, Sijo poem from the 1600s, actually written by a Korean writer. And the second one is a modern Sijo poem by Linda Sue Park, uh, who some of you may be familiar. She wrote Long Walk to Water, very popular um, American Korean writer. And um, just for those of you who teach elementary, uh, I teach predominantly social studies, but we're always kind of looking for those literacy tie-ins. Um, Tap Dancing on the Roof is a whole book about modern um, Sijo poetry, and especially a good tie-in if you're going to do Korean poetry writing this year is uh, the Newberry is When You Trap a Tiger, which is all about Korean folklore. Uh, Lauren, can you give me the second slide, please? And how we did this is we created, uh, we used a program called Book Creator, uh, which is an online free ebook creator. Uh, there's lots of different editing options in here. You can import videos, images. There is a video tutorial down here for teachers and for students. Uh, so when you get this slide deck, uh, all these are hyperlinks. You can click on these. And so what we did in this one is we, the, my fourth graders came up with a topic that they wanted to write about. Uh, I live in central Wisconsin, big hunting community. So you can kind of see those in our topics over here. And what my fourth graders tried to do is they tried to write a seizure poem. Uh, some were a little bit more successful than others, but then what they did is they sent their poems and their topic to the high school students in, um, who were also in the hybrid model. And the high school students wrote, or took the kids' topic and they wrote a little bit of a more complicated issue, or a more complicated poem, excuse me. So these are what the poems, these are PDF images um, of what the book will end up looking at if you print them out as PDFs. Uh, you can share links uh, share a link so there's an ebook version and these can be interactive. Uh, these pictures of my kids here, these are actually videos. Uh, so when we sent the books out to the communities, they could see the kids reading them. And it's actually put it on the other slide. Um, Lauren, can you go back for a second? Is the link up here when you get the slide deck? If you click on this, this will actually take you to the actual book that my kids created. And then this other link here uh, is a the, the Sijong Cultural Society kind of heads up Sijo writing in the United States. Uh, if you really want to get on the ball, they actually have a poetry contest, a Sijo poetry contest, and the poems are due at the end of uh, the end of April. And they have a junior, like middle and adult category, if that's something you would like your students uh, to be involved in. Oh, and you don't have to. Hi guys, I'm Ruby, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to use. Okay, do you want me to play that? I'm sorry. Can you play the video? No, that was that's just a sorry. That's just an active link for to use Book Creator for if people want to. Okay, okay. so sorry. Okay, this one's me. So what I chose to do is not to give you a particular activity or project, but instead to share a resource. So I've been playing with earthcam.com and I'm enamored of it. The site has pictures of still, there's still cameras that are posted around the world and they have live feed. So right now, if I clicked on Prague, I would see what was going on in Prague and it would be early morning there. The links also tell you where it is and the time of day and most of them give you the temperature. I've thought about it for things as complicated as a full activity. For middle school, you could do a treasure hunt. Here's the site, here's a list of countries to look for and you're looking for this thing. You can take screenshots in the program of every one of the pictures. So if I'm watching the live stream of New York, what I did is I just took a screenshot of it while I was watching it. That allows me 
to download the picture and give it as part of my evidence to whatever I want to say. So students can take the pictures, students can do things with it. One of the things I looked at, I tried to pick three very different places. So when I did it this afternoon, it was Rio de Janeiro. It was at night when I took it. So what we saw there is people on the beach at night very different from what you saw in Prague in the live feed, which was one car goes by about every three minutes. I found it particularly interesting in the last few weeks that I've been playing with this to watch New York. And I had one the other day, a middle of a weekday on Times Square, and there were no cars. There were a few people out walking around. And I thought, could you ever have a better picture of what is happening with the pandemic? So I'm offering this to you as a toy to play with with your students. I think that you could use this all the way from elementary through high school, depending on what kinds of activities you wanted. It would also be really great if you just have an extra 10 minutes at the end of class to pull it up on the smart board, let's pick a place and let's see what's going on there and talk about it. So it gives us a chance to sort of peek into other people's cultures. And um, I used, by the way, my standard was the investigate the world. I thought with middle school particularly, just the more they can see and experience, the, easy, the easier multiculturalism is to teach. So, Thanks. and I think that's it for me. All right, thank you, Terry, that was awesome. So um, I am gonna share a, um, just a quick strategy. I'm actually gonna let you watch a video um, about reflecting upon uh, images. And what I really like about this is it's, it's a no prep thing that you can probably do tomorrow. Um, it's ready to go for you. So. Um, minus kind of vetting the photos and, and seeing if they're age appropriate. So just real quick, so you can see, um, this is background for the student. If you're if you're wanting to build a lesson, um, and then what this is is definitely I would make sure that you you watch this before you share it with the students because there's some, um, you know, if you've listened to Brene Brown, she she doesn't hold back. So you want to make sure that you watch that. Um, and this is all adapted from a uh, better lesson strategy called Exploring Multiple Perspectives. So I'm gonna start out with this video. Aperture. VTS stands for Visual Thinking Strategies, and it's an educational technique for people to look at photographs. Um, and it was invented by Philip Yenowine, and we use sort of a modified version of it. Um, the idea is basically you have students look at an artwork and you ask them what do you see in this picture, what's going on in this picture, and then they make an observation, and then you ask them to back it up with visual evidence. So they can say really anything, any opinion that they have about the work, but they need to be able to back it up with something that they see. To pull from um, Abigail Hausen and Philip Yenowine's basic VTS at a glance, um, the steps that they describe are projecting the first image and giving the students a minute to just take it in. Then ask questions after they've examined it. Ask what's going on in this picture. Then ask what do you see that makes you say that and what more can you find? And you can feel free to modify these questions into language that feels comfortable for you. Then when the students comment, the way you respond is to just listen carefully, point to what they saw in the image, paraphrase their comment. You can change the wording. You can add in vocabulary at this time, but not the meaning. Um, accept each comment neutrally and then link answers that are related and link them to prior knowledge. So what's going on in the picture, everybody? Yeah, what's going on? There's somebody doing their laundry and they're putting their clothes away. Mm -hmm. Or they're putting their clothes into the washing machine. Putting their clothes what? Into the washing machine. Mm -hmm. And what do you see that makes you say that's what's happening um, right now? The person's either taking out the bag or putting the bag into the carriage. OK. Yeah, so they're either taking it out or putting it in. What else is going on in this picture? What else do you notice? I feel like it's the inside and the outside of a person that has been unleashed. Okay, so as you can see, that will continue, and I'm not going to play the whole thing, but um, what they, uh, what the, the narrator really talks about is making sure that you're not leading the students and encouraging them to 
um, to think what you want them to think or inserting your own opinions. And so that I just wanted to give you a teaser so that you need to go back and watch that. Um, and uh, you can even show that to your students, I think, to, to help model how to, um, yeah, to talk through these. And then the link is here for you when you're ready. Um, but as you can see, some of them are pretty powerful. Um, and some might not be age appropriate. So you, you want to click on this before you display it. But I figured you could do a quick right click and put it in a Google slide. Um, um, and I just feel like the possibilities of, are endless with this. So with that, I'm going to move on to the next person. Okay, so um, I teach high school, but there are some of the ideas here that can be adapted. I went to the Arctic on an educational trip a couple of years ago, and I was trying to think of a hook to pull kids in, um, and I came up with the idea of them doing a lawsuit. I got this idea because some environmental groups in the United States have started to do this suing on behalf of rivers, for example. And so um, the students are then lawyers and the animals are their clients and they have to decide what to, who to sue. So they have to do some research and they, then that helps them understand the difficult nature of the fighting over control of the Arctic, like whose problem is it, whose responsibility is it? <clears throat> and um, one thing I didn't expect, why I think this lawsuit idea could can really work in a lot of um, contexts is the idea of making an argument with evidence. You know, we're always talking about using evidence and some of the earlier presenters mentioned that as well. For whatever reason, in the context of a lawsuit, it really seemed to click for some of them better than it had in other places. We did this in the middle of the school year and you know, students that I had been you know, you need more evidence, you need more facts. All of a sudden, they're like, oh, well, I get it. It's a lawsuit, and so I have to prove it. Yes, that's what I've been saying. <laughs> um, but it was it was really useful. And then also the idea of creating um, exhibits for a lawsuit to have visual evidence um, for what they were suggesting. They had to come up with a solution, not just say, okay, there's the problem, but they have to, to for example, tell Norway that they should stop hunting um, whales or allowing whale meat to be sold, for example. So they have to have an ask. And then um, a really interesting one was to, to make it local. We, we said that um, they had to come up with a, something that they could do locally that would directly benefit. And it was really interesting how many of them had these sort of very vague generalizations of what other people could do. And we kept pulling it back to like, no, you, like you literally as a human, what can you do in your life that would help this walrus, for example? Um, and so having them make that connection and, and sort of take responsibility for the animal seemed to really click with a lot of them. Um, so I did put a link here to a website that has the various materials. Um, there are a lot of uh, lessons that lead up to this, this final step. And we did it at a time when we had already been doing a lot of online mapping. And so they had to create maps as exhibit as well. But I think you can use the idea just in general, the idea of a lawsuit or, you know, Sorry, and I'll hand it off to the next presenter. Sorry, first, let me unmute. Um, let me just say before I start, Nicole, that was awesome. I feel like I, you know, I'm sad that I have to follow that because I mean, <laughs> that was such a cool idea and I can't wait to share that with, um, with some of the teachers that I work with, that was awesome. So. Um, the project that I'm going to be sharing is actually pretty simple, but I think that 
in the times we're in now with remote learning and hybrid learning, um, there can be a lot of power in simplicity. So this project is actually pretty simple. We did it with the elementary school. Um, we had pre-K, kindergarten, and first grade working on this project. And um, what I found in my position as a K through five instructional technology specialist, I get to work with all of the teachers and I'm constantly saying, okay, can we do this? Can we do this? What's the easiest way to get something done? And what I found is that if you connect on standards that you already know you're going to cover, and if these are national standards where you know other grade levels are going to be covering the same thing, it makes it a lot easier to find connections and find something to do without having to come up with another idea. So this was something that our first grade students, weather, weather is huge. Um, so we just connected with other classrooms along the same grade level all over the nation on weather because we knew they were going to be talking about it. So that was an easy way to kind of get connected. Um, Something else that I would suggest, especially now during the remote environment or hybrid environment, is pick an easy tool that's user friendly. Um, this is Google Slides, and all of us collaborated on Google Slides. So that was something that was um, easy. Everybody, everybody knew it, and especially in a time like this, I don't really suggest, you know, learning something new unless you have to learn something new. Um, my philosophy this past year has definitely been, you know, less is more, let's stick to what we do and let's do it great. Um, and, Google, and Google Slides is just one of those tools that everybody know is easy and it made this project really easy as well. And so when we're talking about global learning and the different competencies, you know, and when you're wanting your students to have that global perspective, when you connect them with other students around the world, or it doesn't even have to be around the world, right? Like this was just, we, we only connected with people in this particular project, you know, here in the United States, but our students still got that big global perspective because they're learning about what weather is like here in Atlanta and you know what weather is like here in Hawaii. So they're getting perspectives of other students. And this is a good project that can also be done remotely. Students can go outside and do a weather report and then have their parents record it and that can be shared in a Google slide. So that's one of the reasons that I wanted to share this project right now because of the simplicity of it um, and it's something that can that can be done while students are at home sharing what they know about the weather so we are going to go on and i think noah yeah so i'm going to be really quick because we're going to transition in a moment to our breakout rooms but i i wanted to to sneak in an example um for um, world language classrooms. And so this is a great project using Google Google Earth. Um, so definitely wor it works well for remote or hybrid learning or even in-person learning if you're back in person. Um, but this is great for a level one or level two language class where you're learning basic vocabulary. So with this project, we were learning city vocabulary, different locations around a city like schools and libraries and parks and so on and so each student um, individually or with a partner chose a country um, in this case in the spanish-speaking world um, and researched actual real world locations so schools libraries parks uh, national parks etc um, and wrote descriptions in the target language about each place and built them into a Google Earth project. And a Google Earth project allows you to create a presentation where you can advance through slides. You can have um, street level view, um, 3D views, overhead views, and students can talk about um, these different places using the target language and using the vocabulary that we're, we're practicing. So um, contact me if you want some more details or materials for this project let's go on to the next slide because we're going to transition now um we're going to move into three different breakout rooms we're going to have one focusing more on elementary one focusing more on middle school and one focusing more on high school um we're asking you to think about um what is one example of a, a project or a lesson from your classroom or your 
con work context um, that infuses global learning in a way that would work for various contexts, remote, hybrid, particularly. Um, when we go into our our groups, take a moment for introductions, right? This is a great opportunity to meet teachers, educators from around the country, um, all in different, very, very different situations. Um, and then after you introduce yourselves, take a few minutes, five minutes maximum to throw some content on a slide. So it doesn't have to be complete. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, think about an image or an example from your teaching that you can put onto a slide to serve as a visual for sharing an idea with your group. Um, you can finish your slide later. We're actually going to say that um, you have until Monday to finish putting final touches on your slide. And then we're going to send everybody's slides from all three groups and from uh, this panel presentation out to everyone uh, next week. So you can have all of these ideas to draw from. Um, then we'll come back together at about 7.50 Eastern Time. And we'll hear from two or three groups before we wrap up um, tonight's webinar. Okay. Our panelists will be co-facilitating these groups. And so with that, anyone have anything else to add before we move into our rooms? Okay. Isabel, if you could please send us out. Okay. You're all out. Thank you. Hi, Lizzie. You're on mute right now. Should I hop in one? Are you going to go in one? Yeah, I'll probably bounce around the different rooms. Okay. Um, can can I test something with you? Yeah, go ahead. If yeah. you click on the breakout rooms at the bottom. Oh, sorry. It, okay. It froze. No worries. Um, if you click on the breakout rooms button at the bottom of your screen. Um, do you see it? It's I have the pot. Oh, yeah. Breakout rooms. Uh huh. Yes. If you click on that, do you have an option to just join whichever one you want? Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, perfect. OK. OK, wonderful. It yeah, popped so up on the screen that I had an option, but also when I click on that, it happens. Oh, as well. perfect. OK. OK. okay. Um, so yeah, so I'll just probably jump between the rooms and yeah, yeah there's Anyone, 18 minutes left. Is there one you want me to go to? Do you, do you have um, a suggestion? No. no, it looks like high school is a bit bigger than the others, but I think it'll just be interesting to see. Um, I'll probably join elementary first just okay. because that's where I'll, I'll, I'll jump around maybe too, but I'll start with middle. Okay. okay. All right. Sounds yeah. good. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh-huh. I just need a refresher. Hi, Isabel. Hi, just here to listen. Hi, um, and I am, let me see if I can click the link. Okay, I am there. All right, Terry, Luke, were y'all able to get into the slides? Oh, I didn't, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> just sitting here waiting. <laughs> no, because, okay, so go into the slides and let's add some information there because these slides are going to be shared with everyone eventually who was in the webinar and poor Terry is still trying <laughs> Terry can you type it in the chat <laughs> do you want our school emails or our personal ones like whatever you're willing to share yeah okay. I don't care. This, this has been fantastic. Thank you all. You all are doing such beautiful work. I've been taking pictures of the slides. And we will we'll send it out to you, Terry, too, so you'll have the slides because I like Oh, of beautiful. That's even better. I'm sorry that took me a minute. I'm having a little computer problem, but I'm here now.
I'm putting my email in here. Yeah, I'm gonna put mine in there. Let's see. Did, did I do what you wanted me to do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have any like cool ideas that you things you've done or good resources to share with people, you can put those in there too. And also, I don't know if you're like, I'm the elementary teacher that I'm a perfectionist. So we won't send them out until Monday. So if it's something you want to go back and make look pretty, you have, you have a couple days to do that. Well, how do I get rid of the slide that has my name on it? <laughs> you don't want it anymore? No, I, I do. I just, I don't know what I'm doing. We each have a slide. How cute is this? Oh, I have to make it. <laughs> you have to make it. You have to like put your name on it, claim it. I see. Call. Okay, I'm catching up. <laughs> and then you can put like some ideas. And you don't have to add your, <laughs> your like social media or our email unless you like, like I want people to try to contact me if they want to do collaboration. So I want my stuff in there, but you don't have to. If you no, I, I want to collaborate as much as possible. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then you put your idea on here. Oh, I have to pick something. Or it can be like just some cool tools too. Like, you know how Terry shared EarthCam, which I think is yeah. awesome, and Kate shared Book Creator. It can just be like, you know. And I just, I am totally sworn on Book Creator right now. That is the best website. I think one of the best ones I've found out of this whole pandemic thing. That Book Creator looked awesome. I'm really interested in that. Exciting. Are you seeing some really cool things being shared? Just keep those ideas coming. And if you do finish your slide and you want to check out the other ones and maybe come up with questions you might have about resources others have sent, um, then you could do that.
Okay, how are we doing, folks? All right, well, let's, we have about nine minutes or so. Let's um, hear about some of these ideas. Um, I'm going to go to uh, Laura first um, on slide. Well, actually, let's go to slide two. Nicole, do you want to start us off and then we'll just go in order? Sure. I apologize if, uh, if I have audio issues. Um, but I just shared a few resources um, that have brought me a lot of benefit, brought my students a lot of benefit. Um, National Geographic is a group I know Noah has worked with and Ali as well. Um, and not everybody knows that they've been revamping all of their education programs the last few years and have free online professional development that is fantastic. Um, also, in terms of traveling for educators to bring the world back to your classroom. Um, the fund for teachers is another great resources for, resource for that. And then I put a link for the uh, lawsuit from the other um, that I mentioned before. Very good, very nice. And I will just say, I'll put Laura on the spot here. If you, if uh, of, uh, she is the expert on teacher travel, um, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. So if you have any questions about any, once we are able to travel again, Laura is your person. She's done most of the programs that exist. All right. So I wish that were true. <laughs> go ahead, Laura. Okay. So uh, the two that I talked about, one of them is Radio Garden. And so it has a map of the globe and you just spin it and then you key into a city and it plays a local live radio station. Oh. And so we have that on the in the background just during class and the kids are just amazed because it's like 80s songs and 90s songs and they're like why are they in english so then we can talk about you know there's a lot of english songs out there but then when it switches to commercial you know then we all get real quiet and like listen to whatever the language is um the other one that we just started using a couple weeks ago is explore.org um and it was very similar to the city webcams but these are all nature webcams so i mean just this past week, we were watching bears in Alaska, and you know the they're just like swooping the salmon up and sticking them in their mouth. And one of my one of my third graders said, "Did they just disregard the bones?" I said, "Yes, honey, they disregard the bones because <laughs> they just couldn't <laughs> believe that the bears were just eating a whole." So you know, even though that is still in the United States, you know, just we're getting to see amazing things. Thanks, Allie. I think you're up next. Yeah, so, um, and I actually uh, use explore.org as background in my classroom. So when students are doing activities, we have the bears in the background or yes. eagles in their nests. And the students love to just watch this mm -hmm. time of year um, here in Florida when um, it was snowing everywhere else, sorry to say. And Florida mm -hmm. was the only state without snow a few weeks ago. Um, I purposely reminded the students how lucky we were and we put on the explore cam to some of the um, colder regions. So it's a good it's a good global perspective to help students with appreciation of things. Um, one of the things that uh, I was thinking about, my students right now are actually face-to-face -face and hybrid at the same time. Um, but when we went home in the spring, that was when we were fully hybrid. And to try to adjust on the fly, I sent my students all out to do BioBlitz in their backyard or in their neighborhoods using the apps iNaturalist or Seek if they were younger and did not have the ability to sign in through iNaturalist. And both of those apps are very easy to use. They're quick for identification and to help students be able to learn more about organisms in their backyards and in their area that they probably have never really thought about before. 
and it worked out really well to send them out on scavenger hunts, explore their area that they, their community that they live in, and then come back and share as a class all of their findings. Um, and so that was something that was a really quick and easy engagement activity when the students really needed engagement. Um, so something to think about. All right. Um, thank you, Allie. Let, it looks like Kristen, you are up next. So I actually have not used this with students yet, but um, I saw it on TikTok and I've played it myself a few times. It's called City Guesser and you click on it and it's video of places you can um, narrow it by country, you can narrow it by Europe or continent, um, United States, different things, but you um, have to guess where you are. And it's really cool because it's audio and visual. So you can hear people talking. And I've gotten in Europe, sometimes I'm in the right country, but not the right town. So it's kind of cool. It's a, a really neat resource, perfect in this time where we can't travel. Cool. Michelle. Oh, you're muted. Yeah, I have a timer. It's my job. <laughs> Those are John or Wilhelmina, you've got stuff on your slides now. Um, who? John. Yeah. You spoke. You got picked. No good. My screen just went dark. Of course. Oh, really? <laughs> um, there we are. Got it? Yeah. Great. Right. Okay, yeah, and I'm you know, completely unprepared and just saw this this morning and went, okay. Um, my, th my thing was, I, I uh, as bad as this might sound, I get really tired teaching the Holocaust, and that seems like that is the only genocide they've ever heard of. Mm -hmm. And so I created this and said, you know, what, what would maybe make the Holocaust a little more meaningful? And that, and that is not the only genocide that has happened in the world. And, um, and so uh, I got, I did some research and, and, and I, I have friends that are Armenian. And so we looked at different genocides, uh, Cam Cambodia, the Ukraine, Rwanda, uh, Armenia, and uh, and they looked at it, uh, the, the government culture, conflicts, what are some of the underlying aspects of, of this event, and uh, had to put together something. I wanted the skill to come out of it. I wanted them to think about creating their own graphic organizers because they're, you know, they're middle school. <laughs> And, uh, and so what we did is, is they had to create a presentation for the class and as a class, uh, start looking at what are the commonalities? What are you seeing over and over? And, and you'll see some of the same things, so, you know, the racism, uh, different religious beliefs, whatever, uh, the inconvenience of having the people there in the case of the UK, Ukraine. And, um, and so when we looked at those and we got some of the commonalities and, and uh, talked about them, so now we looked at the Holocaust. It is to look out and this and that. <laughs> that must be funny to watch. Yeah. The other thing, not really, I mean, you can't, you have to have your kids in person to do, but you want to talk about posable thought, oh my God, just it, merely for elementary kids and entertainment, you talk about like adaptations and posable thumbs, have them tape their thumb to their hand and try to like function with life without a posable thumb. Yeah. If you can get them to like try to eat lunch that way, it is the funny, like, okay, you're oh. teaching them meditation, but I think it's <laughs> for teachers. <laughs> That's so funny. That's a good one. Oh. Sounds like fun. Ms. Van Heeren, why are we doing that? I need some entertainment today. We're gonna take your thumb to your hand. See, that's why everybody should be in our group because we are the fun group. I know. Yes, that's right. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm looking at the what? time. Looks like we got about a minute. Is that correct, Isabel? Yep. A minute in, okay. Well, it's fun talking to you all. This has been the best, isn't it? So energizing. Yeah, because it's just 
mm-hmm. leap from one idea to another. Mm-hmm. Another one, good one too, and my wife is an elementary music teacher, so then of course comes the plethora of songs, you know, in addition to the, the, you know, the many kinds of books that you can use, but um, here's one that goes, it's a Japanese rock, scissors, and papers. Say, 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 no, yo, 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 and they go, ochalaka, 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 hoy, and then they do the rock, scissors, or papers, and they play the two out of three out of that, and that is fabulous, because <laughs> now they take a game that they know how to play, so I'll, sometime next time we're together, I'll teach it to you and we can play against each other. But when you, all they have to know is ochalaka, 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 hoy. <laughs> and, and oh, that's fun. And then say, I honor you at the end, whoever wins the two out of three. <laughs> oh and my gosh. Game. Yeah. I, I feel like that. if they learned that, they would never, I would hear it all the time. Well, that's all that. you hear. <laughs> mm-hmm. So next time I have another song. Okay, see ya on the other side. I love it. Hi, uh, we are just waiting for everyone to get back in from their breakout groups. And then we are going to have just a moment to share out of some highlights of your breakout group. Um, So I'm gonna give everybody just a minute to get back. And we are still coming in strong, it looks like. Isabel, I'm rocking the shirt today. I Laura. noticed Luke. <laughs> oh, I should have worn mine, Luke, looking good. I should have worn mine too. Oh, <laughs> oh man, we have to play this next time. I know. I didn't get the email about the t-shirts, Luke. Okay, shoot. Okay, next time. Next time. Laugh me out. (laughs) All right. So it looks like most of us are back now. Um, And I don't want to brag on the elementary school group, but I feel like we had a pretty awesome, pretty energizing 20 minutes there where we just shared amazing ideas. So I would love to hear from somebody. If you were in a group and you heard something that was great and you think it would be great for the benefit of the group to share right now, we would love to hear you. So we have a few minutes for that before we get into our ending. So if you want to share, just go ahead and speak up. Okay, I'll go first. I would just like to say I'm Wilhelmina and I'm from the middle school group, but I was very thankful for the information shared uh, by both Mary and John, I think it was, uh, because it gives me insight into what I can strive to do in my middle school setting uh, in trying to connect my students with norms outside of our agricultural rural county. So I want to say thank you for that. And it was very interesting. And Wilhelmina, uh, I will tell you, Elko, Spring Creek, Nevada is way out in rural rural America. We're five hours out of Reno and about three and a half out of Salt Lake. So I understand. (laughs) Whoa. All right, so we are at 7.55. Thank you so much, Wilhelmina, for sharing that. And I have to agree with you. I think that when we hear educators talk about the different things they're doing, that only, well, hopefully that that lifts us up, you know, to want to do more. And um, so, yeah, so I love that you, you got what you got from your group. And um, like we said earlier, we're going to be putting all of these slides together 
um, and sharing it with everyone. So definitely if you didn't add anything to your slide today, but you heard something or thought of something that you would like to add, you still have time to go in and add that because, you know, I think this sounds kind of lame, but I don't care. I'm going to say it. Sharing is caring, right? Like we can only make each other better by sharing what we know. So um, I really hope you all will take the time to add to some slides and, you know, um, if you want to do collaborative activities, put your information on there and, and reach out to each other and get connected on some of these ideas. So um, with that said, I would like to go ahead and let's see, turn it over to Noah for our closing. Sure. Um, let's go to the next slide, please. Um, we do have a couple more webinars coming up in this series, and it, it, they will likely be a similar format where we just put our heads together um, as educators from all over the country, all over the world. We had some international participants too uh, today uh, and just brainstorm how can we, and well, webinar two, I should say, is Global Connections. And that is about connecting our classrooms virtually to classrooms around the world or around the country. Um, and then webinar number three, will be focused on teaching with the SDGs. So we will be finalizing the dates. Um, these these webinars are very much organic and grassroots in the way they come together. We, we bring educators from different states together to build the content. So the April group is getting together, um, starting to get together, and the May group will soon. So we'll keep you posted on those dates and times. Um, but we will, uh, we would love to have some feedback on um, this webinar today. So there is a survey, a sh very short evaluation that's in the chat. Um, it's also on the slide here. And we'll just take the last few minutes here, if you could please uh, complete that before we leave. And we just want to really thank everyone for taking the time to join us today and to participate in the conversations. And feel free during these last few minutes as we are doing the evaluation just to chat and uh, talk to each other as we wrap up. So thank you again. And I want to thank my co-panelists as well. Uh, it's been a great team to work with. I agree, Noah. Thank you all so much. This was such a great hour. I really appreciate you all. Likewise. Thanks, everybody. Good to see your faces. And we do appreciate you filling out the survey. We look at this and um, and we appreciate the feedback and we're gonna go in and make adjustments for the next webinar. So all of your feedback is so helpful. So thank you, we appreciate it. Be honest. Yeah. <laughs> and we wish you all the best. We, you know, teaching is is especially challenging these days. So um, whether you're remote or hybrid or in person or a combination of those three, uh, hang in there. Um, and please look at the slides when we do send them out. Um, I put my contact information on there not to give myself a plug to say, hey, <laughs> reach out to me. I love to do collaborative projects, but my information <laughs> is on there and my Twitter handle is on there as well. So if you want to connect, that would be super awesome. All right. Thank you all. It is eight o'clock on the East Coast, five o'clock on the West Coast. Hope you all have a great evening. Take care. <laughs>